Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as I have another episode for you that's designed to help and support starseeds, lightworkers, and those who are energetically sensitive as we discuss what we are healing and moving through from the bigger spectrum of energies. And this topic actually came through the other day as I was going about my business, doing my own thing, and the download of information started to come in. So this will be channeled information that I really hope supports you because it actually addresses some things that I've been experiencing and moving through too, and has helped me understand what is going on energetically, not only in this lifetime, but in the past 10 to 15 years specifically. I will be covering some astrology in this show as we talk about the transiting planets as they have moved through Pisces over the last number of years. And I'll discuss what has been unfolding and opening us up as well as the bigger picture of it all, which they've shown me as in this lifetime and especially in this time period of the past decade and this decade, so two decades, we are healing a lot of energies from the age of Pisces. Now, we've heard that this is the age of Aquarius and that there's been a lot of hype around that, a lot going on around what those energies are, what that means. And we define an age by where the earth moves in the cosmos. And so when you look at it as an astrology, we talk about where other planets move, right? We talk about where Saturn is in Aquarius, Jupiter's in Aquarius. When we talk about the ages, which last about 2,600 years, 2,600 years. It's about where the earth itself is moving and where it is entering new energies in the cosmos. And this is not a time period where there's a hard stop and a hard start. It's not like there's just one day that begins the age of Aquarius. What we're moving through is an overlapping of energies as we move out of the age of Pisces and into more of the age of Aquarius. And what I've been seeing and what they've been showing me is that part of this exit we've been experiencing is the finishing up of Pisces energies that we have experienced and held for many lifetimes. Now, lifetimes are all happening concurrently. They're all happening right now in terms of how the present moment is always alive. And this is where the information can rattle the brain when we're trying to figure this stuff out. But essentially, all timelines are happening in the now. So we talk about past lives and future lives and current lives because it's much easier to discuss them in those terms. But in terms of how we really experience energy, All energies are present now. Everything is happening now. And this is where we understand that we're living in this quantum experience. We have quantum energies that we then access all timelines, all dimensions, all places. And yet we're very grounded right now on the earth plane in the time space continuum where The energies are denser because this is a 3D planet. The timelines are slowed down. We're familiar with before and after, such as yesterday, today, tomorrow. And that's how we navigate our lives. But as we go up higher and we step away, move away from the time-space experience on the 3D planet, we then are tapping into how everything is happening in the now, how all energy is alive now. So what we're experiencing in our current realities is this ongoing unraveling and releasing of energies from the age of Pisces. And that is why we have been doing so much work, so much healing work, so many things coming up for review. It could feel like some days you take two steps forward, one step back. Or you take two steps back, one step forward. And how they showed these energies to me was through two spools of yarn. And these are big spools of yarn. And one is moving clockwise and the other is moving counterclockwise. 
and that we are simultaneously moving forward with ascension, moving forward with our growth, our intentional choices, what we want to create, what we want to manifest, while at the same time, this other spool of yarn is unraveling and removing these really deep energies that we've been carrying. And it's asking us to continually let go and to look at what's coming up, such as what is the wound? What is the trauma? What is the energy? What is the emotion? What are you feeling? Where does it originate? Is it from this lifetime? Is it from every lifetime? Is it from a certain experience? Is it from a relationship? There's been all this work that's been required that has honestly been really confusing because I don't know about you, but there were times in life, in this lifetime, when I remember things would really move ahead and it would have a very clear direction, a clear yes, there would be progress, there would be a lot happening. And over the past 10 to 15 years, it's felt like there's been this bigger back and forth where, okay, yeah, things move ahead and you can feel it energetically. You can feel the momentum. You can feel the progress that things are changing. But then it's almost like something feels like it grabs you by the ankle and says, wait, you still have to work on this before you can go any further. And then something comes up that you have to energetically work with or be aware of. Something has to be examined or redone. And the energy is basically unwinding itself. So there's been this significant sense of the energy can be confusing, where even in a day, a week, a month, you could feel both energies simultaneously. You could feel that you're moving ahead. Okay, great. Things are happening, turning a corner, turning a new page. And then something happens that also pulls you back into what you thought you completed, what you thought was done. And then we have to revisit something that maybe we thought was healed or completed or we were energetically done with. There's been this back and forth that has been, again, for me at least, confusing at times. But what they're showing me is the bigger picture, that this unraveling of energies, the repetition even of themes in your life, of things that you thought you were done with, that it's a bigger pool of yarn. And it's unraveling many lifetimes of energies. So think about that for a second, that here we are in this current existence, working with our energy in the now, in the present, working on what we can do in a day. And then there's this giant energy that we're unraveling and healing and releasing across multiple lifetimes. Now, keep in mind, what I'm feeling strongly is the age of Pisces energies. And I'm going to talk more about that here in a moment. But for you, if you feel that the energies go much further back than that, such as, oh, I feel actually that I'm working with the age of Aries or age of Taurus or age of Gemini, age of Cancer, you could be feeling a lot more energies because of that. You could feel that there isn't just one spool of yarn unraveling. You could feel like there's four spools of yarn unraveling. And they're showing me that we can work on these energies through various states of consciousness, like the brain accesses these energies at various places. So for example, in our sleep, when the mind is tuned off and goes into other brain waves, that's where we could be accessing or working through some of these other healing energies. So what they're showing me is that the strongest energy relates to this age of Pisces. And It's where we are doing some very deep spiritual purging and we are actually removing a lot of deep programming and belief systems that we absorbed, absorbed and held through many lifetimes. And they're showing me that not only is it similar to like these spools of yarn unraveling, they're showing me the energy in our DNA helixes as moving in these two different directions as well. And there's these energies of the DNA ladder where some of the energies are moving at a different rate, a different speed, and it depends on the individual 
who is embodying the energy because it works differently with all of us. It's very individual. So it could be that you feel that this is happening quickly for you because that's the energy that you can work with, whereas other people could feel it being very slow. Perhaps this is you. It feels like it's very slow moving, uh, this, this energy that's spiraling backwards. And they're showing it to me as the two DNA ladders. Well, we have more than that, though. They're showing me two. And they're, one is spinning clockwise and the other is spinning counterclockwise. But this is also by choice as part of ascension. So it's not happening for everybody because it comes down to your free will. And as you do your healing work, energy clearing, you go deeper into what your wounds are, what the trauma is, what you're looking at at a deeper level of your being, that affects how the energy is moving through your body. But they're showing me that it's just another visual to understand that we are literally unraveling lifetimes of energies in this one lifetime in this one timeline and that's also why it can feel like the progress you've made only gets you so far because there's more to go back and release and so this unraveling it feels like it's a removal of the lower Piscean energies that were held through many lifetimes but also activated in this lifetime over the past 10 to 15 years in a big way. Now, these energies could be something you've carried throughout this lifetime and they've been activated through different periods in your life. But what what I'm seeing here in terms of the astrology is how the various outer planets have moved through Pisces since 2003. Okay, 20 years. I'm one of those people who will say, oh, that happened a few years ago and it happened like 10 years ago. So I'm sorry. (laughs) 20 years ago is when the energies really started to come in because that's when Uranus entered Pisces in 2003. And that activated a lot starting in 2003. Then Uranus went into Aries and came back into Pisces in 2010 And did another retrograde dance. So between 2003 and 2010, Uranus was in Pisces, really activating more of this energy, making it electrifying, bringing it alive, making it clear to you what maybe these themes are, what was happening underneath, even within you, that could have been tricky to identify. Then we had Neptune enter Pisces in 2011. We know that transiting Neptune is still in Pisces until 2026. We also had back in 2010, Chiron entered Pisces where it stayed until 2019. So see how the previous decade, we really had this focus on Pisces energies. Now we have this transiting Neptune in Pisces until 2026. And then we're going to also see Saturn in Pisces starting in March 2023 until 2026. And look at how that energy of Saturn in Pisces lines up with Neptune in Pisces completing its transit through Pisces. Then we're going to see Neptune and Saturn both enter Aries in 2026 which will be a significant energy change. Now, we also are going to have Jupiter in Pisces for a little bit this year, 2021. Uh, Jupiter will enter Pisces in May, where it will stay for a few months and then go back into Aquarius. And then we're going to see Jupiter enter Pisces and stay there the end of 2021. So we basically have had a significant energetic lineup of planets moving through Pisces and doing a little bit of a baton handoff, uh, sort of like a relay race where the energies keep going and they've been going since 2003 until 2026. And that's just within these cycles of energies because Saturn goes into Pisces every 30 years. 
And so we do get the revisitation of Saturn in Pisces, same with Chiron in Pisces, Jupiter in Pisces. But what we have that's unique is this long lineup of energies, including Uranus in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, and they are opening up to us more of these deeper age of Pisces energetic wounds that we've been carrying and assisting us in releasing them. So when we talk about the age of Pisces, we always have the higher and lower expressions of every astrological sign. And so the higher expressions of Pisces reminds us that change is inevitable. Everything is meant to transform into a new source of energy. Nothing is permanent. It gives us the ability to remain flexible and open and to trust the changes, to trust what happens The Pisces energy taps us into the higher perspectives of the universe and of energy. It asks us too to look at what do we travel with that resonates with us energetically regardless of the changes that happen. And this is where we can seek spiritual understandings of our lives, of ourselves, of what it's about, of what's happening in the world. We tend to go higher in Pisces. That's one of the gifts is go higher. See it from a different vantage point. Tap in to what you feel intuitively. Pisces is very intuitive. It's very much about what you're feeling and sensing, what's not being said directly, but what you're picking up on through your spidey senses, uh, what's coming through that you're feeling and really trusting is a truth. The Pisces energy also taps us into the energies of forgiveness and no judgment where we're learning how to not judge ourselves for what we've been through, what we've chosen, what we've said, what we've done. We're learning how to not go there, not go into that place of judgment and instead to stay open to the ongoing lessons and learning. The Pisces energy wants us to be compassionate with ourselves, forgive ourselves, love ourselves, be very aware of the energy that we are giving to ourselves and to make sure that we're very mindful of raising it, very mindful of how we can stay in that place of seeing ourselves as these spiritual beings having a human experience. And this means that as we heal and close out these age of Pisces energies for however long it's going to take. Because yes, the planets do stay in Pisces until 2026, but it will be different for every person. It will depend on how you grow, how you learn, how you heal. Um, there could be a significant shift for many light workers and star seeds in 2026, where you feel a completion that's really clearly done for you based on the healing work you've been doing for 20 years, if not your full lifetime. It feels like that's significant. However, every person does this differently, right? They're on their own timeline. And so what else is happening here is that we're looking at the lower octaves of Pisces energy, what we have observed, what we have experienced, what we have taken on that we didn't realize we were holding in our energy fields. And that's why this ongoing transformation and healing work has been so prominent for millions of us because we're literally undoing so many things. And what comes up then with these lower expressions of Pisces energy is where we've given our power away, where we've given our energy away, where we have wanted to be of service or perhaps have been a ser- of service throughout many lifetimes in any capacity, but it's led to death, persecution, abandonment, rejection, being ostracized, being marginalized. It's led to a sense of giving, giving, giving at the expense of yourself where you're depleted. I believe this is also why there are so many empaths on the planet right now and people are tuning into their empathic abilities because in this lifetime you are now calling back the energy you gave away you're calling back what you have unconsciously participated in in dynamics in relationships in partnerships in your family it's all coming up to your awareness i feel like for many people 
the families that they have incarnated with are families that they've had many soul group experiences with throughout the age of Pisces. And there's this, this theme of self-sacrifice. And now they're showing me the energy of Jesus and the man, uh, the consciousness. There, it's a consciousness uh, that was the archetype of Jesus Christ. And that there's beautiful symbology and energy in the story that's told. And there's things that have been left out around the story that's told around uh, Jeshua. They're showing me that there are parts of the story that weren't even highlighted that was very, very important. And that this light of consciousness that we know as, as Jesus, as Jeshua, embodies Christ consciousness as the energies of self are directly connected to the energies of God, source, spirit, the universe, the creator, whatever name you want to give it. And they're saying that this is where so much got flipped around. They're showing me an hourglass where an hourglass gets shifted around and that there's so much that wasn't told to the people, quote unquote, the people, because the story was rewritten with other intentions. And then they're saying this was what happened with numerous messengers is that the energies were either twisted, maneuvered, flipped around for another agenda. And they're saying too that it could have been very naive, that it wasn't intentional. And, and this is so important. I'm feeling this so strongly. It's important to know that things that get changed around, they're not always of a bad intention. They're not always evil. They're, they're not always like the bad guys. They're saying it was actually really naive, that there was very young souls, very naive young souls who misconstrued information. And unfortunately, it's been very influential and there hasn't been the ability to retell the story in a way that would correct it for the masses. And now they're showing me the beautiful Mary Magdalene, who was very much a strong presence, an equal who also held a lot of power and energy, that there was a lot that she wrote and documented, that she was an equal guide to the messenger we know as Jesus Christ. And they're actually showing me that every messenger who's come on the planet has had an equal guide that was their divine counterpart or match. But again, those parts of the story were left out and that there, this could have been a very naive thing, but they're saying there, there are things that are also very intentional about that as well. So this is one area of the age of Pisces that we are healing, is where we have felt powerless, where information's been misconstrued. The messages were maybe tampered with, or they weren't 100% the full story. And that as we unravel the age of Pisces energies, there's a deep reprogramming that's happening. So we're removing from our energy systems down to the DNA cellular level. We're removing what has been embedded into us that is no longer in resonance or in alignment. And this energy that's unraveling and being released has required so much work. And it's why it's been confusing. It's, it's why, again, you could feel like, why isn't this moving ahead? Or why am I still spinning in a theme, a lesson, an energy? And they're saying that it's just a very big time right now on the planet. And this is meant to give us a bigger, broader understanding of what we've been working on. And so if you have been doing a lot of deep healing work and you felt like, oh my gosh, this is never ending. What is going on? Why is this so big? Uh, they're saying that what you're doing is mammoth for one human lifetime. That it's so big, but we're doing it together. It's a collective experience of the unraveling so that there is room and space for this new sense of self to truly emerge as we continue through the age of Aquarius energies. And as the earth moves from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, there is now the return to a knowingness of more of who you are at an individual soul level. And what they're showing me too, so this 
the spools of yarn that are unraveling at the core like at the very middle of that spool is this beautiful soul essence and that's what we're returning to is a purity of energy that knows who it is that knows that authentic self that knows more of who you are but it's been wrapped up literally it's been wrapped up and covered in these other energies that have expired that are no longer in resonance that are that are no longer even of the right vibration or frequency and they're showing me that some of this yarn it just falls off it just like falls away like it has nothing even to attach to or cling to it's just coming undone it's being removed um it happens at different beads like they're showing me how sometimes it happens really fast and then other times it happens really slowly and that the other spool of yarn that's moving let's call it clockwise is also doing the same thing where it's either speeding up or slowing down and that's why the integration of energies maybe has felt unpredictable at times and that there's been things that you know you've mastered you know you've got it you've reworked some belief systems you understand some deeper programming you know you've gone into these various areas of your life and you've looked at what the source is or what the cause is and and you've got it right you're energetically clear but then it takes time for the energies to sync up and it's, they're just showing me that that's why it's been so confusing. And I know that's kind of the key word here is that why won't the energy just go forward or why do I keep being pulled back or why do I have to keep revisiting things and why is it so damn hard? Why is there so much about this lifetime or the past 10 years, the past 20 years that has been so intense and so damn hard? And they're saying it's because of this much deeper work that's happening that we said we wanted to do that at a soul level there was a sense of okay i can handle this because i'm not alone there are millions who are doing the work alongside me there are millions who understand and who get it and there i feel like we're also going to see the rewards and the payoffs in this lifetime too where all this work is clearing us it's cleansing us it's bringing us back to this pure essence of self that we can tap into without the barricades, without having to work really hard to tap into it. So this is the, the walls falling down, the removal of the barriers, and it feels like the rewards are coming in and we're feeling them, but it's a longer process and it's a deeper process than maybe other things in your life that you've experienced. Like for example, I remember times in my own life when when something moved forward, it was a very clear energy. And this can feel kind of clogged up at times or kind of like the zigzag or the back and forth where yes, things move ahead, there are things developing, there is new energy coming in, but it's not completely cleared yet. And what they're saying is that it's going to continue to feel like this back and forth for the next few years, especially. But hopefully this provides an understanding of what's coming apart. And it could even be shattered. Um, they're showing me that there's parts of ourselves, our human selves, that are just falling away, that are just shattered. Like these identities, the false egos, the false sense of self, the programming. Um, and, and they're showing me too, like this can apply to every area of life where you and I were told by external sources what it meant to be successful or what it meant to be educated or what it meant to be in your power or to live a good life. Like they're showing me that some of these lower age of Pisces energies were where we gave our power away to what we thought was a supreme authority, something outside of ourselves that had that connection to God, source, spirit, that the individual did not have access to. And this comes from very deep uh, religious programming that has been really strongly embedded into the planet and that that's part of what's been shifting. Uh, you can see it even in the data where there are millions of people now who will say they are spiritual but not religious. This is part of 
the moving away from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Now, the age of Pisces is not bad. It's not like everything was horrible and wrong. It's not that simple. There are the highs and the lows of every energetic expression. But what is coming through is that this is why we have some big lessons in this lifetime about being in your power, working with your spiritual gifts, understanding who you are as an individual, because all of this supports moving into the age of Aquarius energies, which is a deep knowingness, a deep knowingness of who you are, what you're here to do, what your gifts are, a reconnection to your own unique spark and having that be enough because the Aquarius energies is a fixed air sign. Fixed means holds the energy, holds the vision. It's stabilizing. It's a stabilizing influence. And so that's a beautiful transition here as we move away from the confusion and the lack of clarity of some of these Pisces themes, we're moving into a place of stability within ourselves at a very deep cellular level. And it is a direct connection to that soul essence spark. I mean, they're showing this to me as a very beautiful, clear energy, very crystalline, a very high vibrating, very much about light. And they're showing me that this is part of what we're tapping into. And if you know the zodiac, you know how every astrological sign starts at zero and ends at 29. Well, as the earth moves backwards through the cosmos, we move from the zero point of Pisces to the 29 degree point of Aquarius. Now, this is just symbology. There is not an exact time when the earth moves from zero degrees of Pisces to 29 degrees of Aquarius. But to give you an understanding of how it works, after we've cleared out a lot of these energies, we come back to that zero point, which is a place of void. It's a place where the energies have not been affected or infected with anything. It's a point of purity. And so as we then move into the 29 degree of Aquarius, that is the place of really knowing what you've accumulated, the knowledge around your own energy, the knowledge around the soul's journey and what has been a big part of your own evolution. So I feel like as we move into the age of Aquarius energies even more, we're tapping into a deep knowingness that we've held, but it's been covered up, forgotten, uh, perhaps something that we just gave away or didn't fully embrace. I feel like what's happening is that more people are really getting to the heart of who they are at an energetic level and how it can support you in this lifetime. Because it feels like we're meant to practically apply this knowledge and this wisdom. We're meant to use it. It has a purpose. It isn't just supposed to be more knowledge or another book on the shelf. It's meant to be deeper wisdom around who you are that you then use to create your version of heaven on earth, your version of living a good life, your version of what it means to be you, the freedom, the independence to be who you are, the sense of confidence and strength to be who you are, and that this is part of how we are co-creating the new earth, which I see on a higher energetic plane, which I see as already very open and alive, Um, I see this new earth energy as very active. It's already been stabilized energetically around the earth atmosphere. There's already been enough energy to create this new earth. And it's very much about the 5D energetics. And I feel it as a very clean and clear energy where the colors are very vibrant. Uh, The colors of the mountains, of the water, of the flowers. Uh, There's a lot that activates our senses. There's a sense of this is fresh and new. And again, it feels very alive, very strong, very vibrant. And that's part of what we are experiencing more on a regular basis. Are these higher vibrating energies 
that correspond to our deep knowingness of self and your unique spiritual gifts. The Aquarius energy helps us with individuation. So part of what we're healing through the age of Pisces is the breaking free of identity confusion, where your own identity has been mixed up or mixed in with something that is no longer true for you. And I'm feeling this specifically around the family relationships where we chose to come in with certain soul groups that would reveal more around what we needed to heal, learn, and transform through these very strong Pisces energies. Now, in your natal chart, you want to identify where you have Pisces energies from 0 to 29 degrees. And if you have any planets or points in Pisces, and by points, I mean your ascendant, your descendant, midheaven, south node, north node, uh, vortex, part of fortune. If you have any points in Pisces, in addition to planets, that shows you more specifically what you are healing through these age of Pisces energies. So if you have Venus and Pisces, you are healing the feminine energies. You are healing perhaps your relationships with women, with friendships. Uh, you're healing that feminine energy in your life, but first within yourself. And if you have Mars in Pisces, then you are healing perhaps your relationships with masculine or with men. You're healing your ego. You're healing your sense of self and so on. So know that these energies in Pisces are showing you more specifically what you're healing in this lifetime. If you do not have any planets in Pisces, you still have Pisces in your natal chart from zero to 29 degrees, and you would want to identify which house or houses you're working with this energy. So for example, if Pisces is on your ascendant, which is your rising sign, but let's say it starts in your 12th house, is your rising sign and goes into your first house, then the energy is active for you in your 12th house and your first house. So you could have Pisces energy in one house, two house, or three houses in your chart. And this would show you the area of life where you're working with these Pisces energies. So this can help you tap into the specifics and the themes for yourself. And of course, this is also where the transiting planets have moved through your chart and revealed to you more around these Pisces themes. So I'm feeling like there will be a part two of this topic that what was first shown to me was the unraveling of these energies and why it's been necessary, why we've been on this endless healing path and the significance of it. And I'm getting the message that there's going to be a part two of this topic and that it will give us some more information and insights into this energy that we're moving through that's really big and really significant. Uh, and again, what they're saying is that we are going to have rewards and energy shifts in this lifetime for all of this deep work. That is a very big deal. And again, we're working on energies across multiple lifetimes, which is why it's been so big and perhaps never ending. Keep in mind that the Pisces energy can also, in its lower expressions, feel like giving up, want to disappear, is uh, flaky, or wants to escape into other places, other realities. Uh, the escapism can show up through also uh, alcohol and drugs and anything that takes your mind out of this reality. There is escapism through many means, of course. Um, but part of what's coming up is that we're seeing that, okay, they're saying this very clearly. These energies are not your true identity. That even those who have been through the experience of addiction and some type of abuse in this lifetime, that you're healing it in a very powerful way, and you're healing it potentially across multiple lifetimes and timelines. And if it's been an ongoing struggle, to understand that it's so much bigger than you and that it probably originated in another lifetime. Now, there's different ways you can tap into the cause of some of these energies or the origination of the energies. So look into that for yourself. Um, if there is something that you're sensing or feeling. And yes, there are ways you can do this through paid services, um, through anything with past life regression, 
past life readings, Akashic record readings, any kind of energy work that can potentially open you up to some of these bigger stories. And there are even messages all around us coming through. So they're saying too that you could feel yourself drawn to a particular location on the planet that you don't know why you're interested in this country, this city, this culture, and that it's reconnecting you with part of your own soul's journey and perhaps where one of the wounds originated. So ask for support. Ask for understanding. Ask to know more. If you're really trying to get to the heart of something, to change something, to figure it out, ask and see what comes through. Um, something that's worked for me is that I really love books that discuss more about soul stories and soul adventures. And I've mentioned before, I'm sure many of you already know about Michael Newton's work, A Journey of Souls and Life Between Lives. He has three books out that are excellent for going into these explorations. Another author that I really love, his name is Robert Schwartz, and he has three books out, Your Soul's Gifts, Your Soul's Plan, and a new book called Your Soul's Love, which talks about relationships and the pre-birth planning of certain relationship themes. These are the kinds of books where I personally, when I read something and it really resonates, I feel the healing happen within me. I feel something shift. It's like, Pieces have been connected, something comes into focus, and then I get an answer, I get an understanding that shifts the energy for me or that, that heals me. So that's why I love these books is because you can read something that deeply resonates and it helps you. It helps you understand more of what's going on or at least gives you more insights and perhaps breadcrumbs to follow around what you're healing as well. So please check out any of these kinds of books that may assist you in your own life and with a deeper understanding of what's going on for you because it could bring you great peace. It could bring you more understanding and just a sense of, oh wow, that's what I've been moving through. So I love sharing these types of works with you because I really hope it helps you and assists you. So I will be back to do a part two of this topic and I don't know what's going to come through yet. So we will just see what happens uh, when I do part two and that will be released on April 19th, 2021. So if you're listening to this after the air date of this episode, you can go back and find part two will be on April 19th, 2021. This is part one that is happening on April 12th, 2021. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your time, energy, and attention as always. And I hope that there has been at least one message that resonated or supported you in this topic. I'll be back soon with another podcast episode as I release them every Wednesday and Monday. And please check out my YouTube channel where you'll find a lot of playlists on various astrology topics and spiritual teachings. And again, I hope that also supports you in what you are learning about yourself and understanding about who you are at a soul level. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you back here very soon. And I hope you have a beautiful day ahead.